Hello, myself, Dr. Sudha from Government Science College, Autonomous Bank. In this session, let us study applications of calculus of variation, geodesics. In the previous session, we had studied the geodesics on a plane as well as on a sphere. In this session, let us study the geodesics on a right circular cylinder as well as a right circular cone. For that, we require the prerequisites, spherical polar coordinates, cylindrical polar coordinates, Euler's equation and particular forms of Euler's equation. First, let us study the geodesic on a right circular cylinder. Here we need to prove that the geodesics on a right circular cylinder is a circular helix and helix is a curve which is similar to the spring formed in a ballpoint pen. Let us begin the proof. For this, let us consider a right circular cylinder with Z axis as axis and radius A that is the radius of the base circle is A units. R is equal to A, that is radius is equal to A, therefore dr is equal to zero. So this is the right circular cylinder whose axis is Z axis and the base circle is having radius is equal to A units. Now let us consider the element of arc length in cylindrical coordinates that is r, phi and z and that is given by ds square is equal to dr square plus r square into d phi square plus dz square. Now let us substitute r is equal to a as well as dr is equal to 0 which is found here in the previous step. So we get ds square is equal to a square into d phi square plus dz square. Now let us solve for ds for that we need to remove the root sign. Before removing the root sign, here we are removing d phi square outside the root sign. So we get ds is equal to root of a square plus dz by d phi whole square into d phi. dz by d phi can be written as z dash. So we get ds is equal to root of a square plus z dash square into d phi. Now to find the arc length between any two points, we are required to integrate ds between the two points a and b. Suppose s is the arc length between the two points a and b, we get s to be equal to integral a to b ds. That is equal to integral phi 1 to phi 2 root of a square plus z square into d phi where phi 1 and phi 2 corresponds to the points a and b respectively. Now for a geodesic, s must be minimum. For s to be minimum, it has to satisfy the Euler equation. So geodesic is the curve on the cylinder for which s is minimum. So s to be minimum, it must satisfy the Euler's equation dou f by dou z minus d by d phi of dou f by dou z dash equal to 0. But here f is root of a square plus z dash square which is independent of both phi and z which is similar to independent of both x and y. Therefore the Euler equation reduces to y double dash equal to 0. Here it reduces to z double dash equal to 0. To find z, we are required to integrate twice. So on integrating twice, we get z is equal to a phi plus b, where both a and b are constants, and this is the required extremal. But we are required to prove that the geodesic is a circular helix. For that, since we have z double dash equal to zero, on integrating once, we get z dash is equal to constant. But what is z dash? z dash is dz by d phi and that is equal to a, a constant. Since z, dz by d phi is equal to a, the curve makes a constant angle with the z axis. 
Since the curve makes a constant angle with the z-axis, the curve must be a helix. And the circular helix will be like this. So this is the circular helix which runs over the surface of the right circular cylinder. Therefore, the required geodesic on a right circular cylinder is a helix. Now let us move on to the geodesic on a right circular cone. We are required to find the geodesics on a right circular cone. For that, let us consider a right circular cone with semi-vertical angle to be alpha and vertex at the origin and the axis along the z-axis. Therefore, the cone looks like this. The vertex B is at the origin 0, 0, 0 and the axis is along the z-axis and the semi-vertical angle the complete angle will be two times alpha, but the semi-vertical angle, that is half of the angle, will be equal to alpha. Therefore, the equation to the cone in the spherical coordinate system can be written as theta is equal to alpha. Since theta is equal to alpha, d theta is equal to zero. Now let us consider the arc element in the spherical polar coordinates, that is r comma theta comma phi. Since theta is equal to alpha, d theta is equal to 0, ds square is equal to dr square plus r square, d theta square plus r square sin square theta d phi square now becomes ds square is equal to dr square plus r square into sin square alpha into d phi whole square. From this expression, we need to solve for ds. For that, let us remove dr square outside. So when we remove dr square outside, we get 1 plus r square sin square alpha into d phi by dr whole square into dr square. But we require ds. So we need to remove the square root. So when we remove the square root, we get root of 1 plus r square sin square alpha into d phi by dr whole square into dr. But d phi by dr is nothing but phi dash. So on substituting d phi by dr as phi dash, we get this expression for ds. To find the arc length between any two points A and B on the cone, we are required to integrate ds between the points A to B. So the arc length joining two points A and B on the cone is given by S is equal to integral A to B ds. And that can be written as integral R1 to R2, where R1 and R2 corresponds to the points A and B on the cone of a root of 1 plus r square sin square alpha phi dash square dr. Now for a geodesic on the cone, the arc length s must be minimum. For arc length s to be minimum, it must satisfy the Euler's equation. What is the Euler equation? Do f by do phi minus d by dr of do f by do phi dash equal to 0. But here f of r comma phi comma phi dash is given by root of 1 plus r square sin square alpha into phi dash square. Here we are uh, having only the variables r and phi dash and therefore it is independent of phi which is similar to f independent of y. Therefore, the Euler's equation reduces to dou phi by dou phi dash is equal to k, which is a constant. Now, let us substitute for dou f by dou phi dash. Since f is a function within the root sign, on partial differentiation, we get 1 over 2 times root of 1 plus r square sin square alpha into phi dash square. And the derivative of this inner function, that is 2 r square sin square alpha into phi dash equal to k. Here we can cancel out 2 in the numerator as well as the denominator and cross multiply this numer denominator to the right hand side and we obtain r square sin square alpha into phi dash is equal to k into root of 1 plus r square sin square alpha into phi dash square. From this expression we are required to find an expression for phi dash. So let us square both sides and simplify we get r to the power of 4 sin power 4 alpha phi dash square is equal to k square into 1 plus r square sin square alpha into phi dash square. 
Shift this second term on the right hand side to the left hand side and re remove r square sin square alpha into phi dash square common. We get r square sin square alpha minus k square equal to k square. Now, on solving for phi dash square and then removing the root sign, we get phi dash is equal to k by r sin alpha into root of r square sin square alpha minus k square. Now let us remove this sine square alpha outside the root sign. We get sine alpha and combine that with this sine alpha. And we know that 1 by sine alpha is cosecant alpha. So we can move that to the numerator. And we get an expression as k cosecant square alpha divided by r into root of r square minus k square into cosecant square alpha. And this pi dash is written as d pi by dr. Now to find phi, we are required to integrate. On integrating, we get phi is equal to integral k cosecant square alpha divided by r into root of r square minus a square into cosecant square alpha dr plus c. And this is uh, similar to the standard integral 1 over root of x into root of x square minus a square dx. And we know that is given by 1 by a secant inverse x by a. When we compare these two integrals, r will be equal to x as well as uh, k cosecant alpha will be equal to a. So we can write this integral to be this numerator which is independent of r is removed outside the integral sign and we get 1 over a that is k cosecant alpha secant inverse x by a that is r by k cosecant alpha plus c. k cosecant alpha gets cancelled here and we are left with one cosecant alpha in the numerator. Shift this c to the other side we get phi minus c and bring this cosecant alpha to the left hand side which becomes sin alpha. So we get phi is equal to cosecant alpha into secant inverse r sin alpha by k plus c. This sin alpha is nothing but 1 by cosecant alpha. So in the next step we get phi minus c into sin alpha is equal to cosecant, sorry, secant inverse of r sin alpha by k and this is the required geodesic on a right circular cone and these constants k and c can be obtained by using the condition that the curve passes through the two points A and B respectively. Hope everybody could follow the geodesics on a right circular cylinder as well as the right circular cone.